Hello, it's Melody. Welcome to A Slainer Spin, episode 25. Uh, this week I am responding to an email I received from a person who I'm not going to name, obviously. Uh, but the email is, and the question is very representative of a question that I frequently get from uh, different people at talks and other emails that I've received. So I thought it was worth um, addressing specifically here. Uh, and the question or the email reads as follows. I am intrigued by your story. Thanks so much. You probably wouldn't be had you lived it, but it's very sweet of you to say. Um, how do you recommend going about being a working professional with bipolar disorder? I am a licensed lawyer, but I am still working on managing employment with my condition. Any insight would be helpful. Um, one, you're not alone. There are a lot of professionals uh, with psychiatric conditions who are working to figure this out and who are highly capable. So don't question whether you're capable because obviously you've graduated law school and you've uh, past the bar, presumably, and are applying for employment right now. So you've managed to go through all of that. Uh, don't question your own capabilities. Um, at this point, uh, trying to figure out uh, whether or not you should disclose your disability in order to get protections under the Americans with Disabilities Act, which are protections you will only get if you disclose because your employer cannot be expected to comply with the ADA and provide you accommodations if they are unaware of your disability. And for the record, I've said this before, but I'll say it again, for the top 10 leading causes of disability around the world, last I checked, according to the World Health Organization, are mental illnesses. Um, so of course they count. And people ask me all the time, do they count? Of course they count. Um, but of course your employer or your university needs to be aware of this information. Uh, I will say to the credit of the legal profession, things are improving slowly but surely. Uh, the first episode of A Saner Spin that I ever did, I referenced an article, an op-ed that I wrote for the New York Times about how the American Bar Association was discriminating uh, against future lawyers by promoting questions on certification of fitness applications, determining whether someone is certified to be fit to be a lawyer, um, asking mental health inquiries that were asking about mental health status, uh, not what have you done, but what is your disability status, which is the definition of something that violates the ADA. Um, and so that is changing. Uh, since I wrote that op-ed two years ago and did that first Saner Spin, uh, the ABA has formally changed its, opi its opinion there, its position, and told, um, encouraged state bar associations to change their questions. That hasn't happened yet in every state, for sure. It's still an ongoing process. But in addition to that op-ed, obviously, there was a lot that made that happen. It was mostly the fact that the Justice Department, shortly after I wrote that, sent a letter to the state of Louisiana saying that their question violated the ADA. And then the Baselin Center for Mental Health Law was um, sponsoring these lawsuits that helped uh, really change, uh, I guess, the environment. So things are getting better, uh, not fast enough as far as I'm concerned. Uh, but the question of whether or not to disclose if you have a disability as a professional is huge if you have a so-called invisible disability, whether it's bipolar disorder or even MS or HIV or any disability that might not immediately be visible, right? Um, do you disclose these things? And if you want accommodations for your disability um, or for your condition that may cause you to be um, disabled in, at certain times, then your employer needs to be aware of that condition. Otherwise, they're not um, required to provide accommodations. Obviously, they can't be expected to. Um, so I say in terms of deciding when to disclose or not to disclose, that's a personal decision, and there's no one right answer to that. By any means, uh, winning an employment discrimination lawsuit is not easy. If somebody does fire you on the basis of your disability, you have to be able to prove that. Um, and that's not an easy thing to prove. So I say if you are going to disclose, make sure that you get everything documented, everything in writing as much as you possibly can. Just make sure you get as much documentation as you can in terms of you revealing it and um, disclosing it and where they're aware of it. Try and get your employer or university or whoever is um, you're disclosing this to uh, to write things down. And uh, if there's anything that's not written down, try and get it recorded in some way or another. Um, so all of that to say, it's I, I'm not going to tell you what to decide. It's a decision that you need to ba make based on your own um, experience. And no one decision is more valid than the other. It's a hard decision to make for sure. Uh, but I will say that if you are a lawyer, and I say this specifically to the person who sent this email, um, I really encourage lawyers to go into the field of disability rights and civil rights. That is an area that having a disability is not going to um, 
I think, go against you. If anything, it's going to be something that means that you are more compassionate towards your clients, that you understand what your clients are going through, and that you're able to advocate for them in a way that somebody who has not experienced a disability themselves um, might not be able to advocate that way. So we need a lot of disability rights lawyers. So if you're in a firm where you feel uncomfortable working in corporate, for example, where you, you feel uncomfortable disclosing, uh, your disability, then maybe you're not in the right firm. Maybe you're not in the right place. And as a lawyer, you do have opportunities to be somewhere else. Uh, and I encourage you to look at those opportunities and see what is available in the field of disability rights in particular, whether you're working specifically with people with mental illnesses or not. Um, so I'm not sure how much that helps, but that is my answer so far. If you have any other suggestions or questions or comments, leave them in the comments.